will okay. hear your request. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you all. Okay, my name, as a prof mentioned just now, my name is Ahmed Midiani. I am from MBIOCS UKM. I previously graduated from UPM as a master and PhD from Faculty of Food Science. And I'm still collaborating with IBS and also Faculty of, of Food Science from UPM. Please today feel free to ask any questions. I will share experience with you. And also maybe we can make it interactive. You can stop me anytime and you can ask questions. Yeah. Please, can you stop your mic? Do you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Okay, today, Prof. Only Dimesh uh, talk about the literature review. Today, I want to talk to you about how to do literature search, conducting an effective literature search. Uh, before I forget, I have one student here with me, is uh, Liana. Maybe someone is surprised why there is Liana there. She is my student. Later on, she will help me with uh, some practical for the how to do the citation. Liana. She's... Liana, show your face, please. With you, yes, sure. Later on, she will help me. Okay, then please feel free to ask any questions. Don't be shy. Don't say the, the question is basic, it's okay. I think you have experience from the lectures, the previous lecture from Prof. Then maybe you have more experience, inshallah, by attending this uh, presentation. Because today we will focus, this is the outlines about the literature search, how to do a good literature search. So please let me just stop my WhatsApp. It will disturb me. This is the outlines. How do to, to do the literature search? What are the database that we can use it? I I know you know some of them, like the Scopus, the Google Scholar. Anyone tell me if you want to do any literature search, which one you will go first for any like uh, Scopus, Google Scholar or others. Maybe can some of you can give me some examples and which one you use, you think about it from the first time when you think about literature search, you want to see papers, which one you will go first? Don't be shy, just talk, just to be- Research a bit, doctor. Okay. Any other answers? Okay, for me, I share my experience with me. The first thing I will go for, I will go for Google Scholar. Google Scholar, it will give you all the, the papers or all the literature. From there, maybe you can do a filter, see which paper is relevant to you and which paper is not relevant. And then mostly we will go for the recent papers, the one maybe in the last five years. Especially for the thesis or the papers, we will focus on the last five years. If you don't have enough literature, then you can go for the, the 10 years. Then I will show also paraphrasing and how to avoid the plagiarism. Everyone know what is plagiarism? Later on, I will show in the, my slide and also how to manage the citation and the references. I know you can do your references by manually, but there is software can help you to do it effectively and also nicely. Later on, I will show what are the softwares. Okay, by the end of this presentation, I hope you will be able to understand the steps and the strategy for conducting comprehensive literature search, and also learn how to do the important of avoiding the plagiarism and also learn how to paraphrase effectively using some software I will show you later on, as I say just now, and also understand the paraphrasing. There is some 
sentences that they will not be as a plagiarism. I will show you what are the sentences and also how to paraphrase some other people work, how you and how you to cite it properly. And also the importance of citation in the literature review. And later on, my student will show you how to use Mandali in managing the reference. In UPM, when I was a student, they have the rough works from the library. They provide for us the rough works and also EndNote. But now as Mandali as free accessible from the internet, this one is free software. It can be used for any student. That's why today I want to show you how to use Mandali because I don't have the access to the rough works. Okay, before I start all this thing, as a student, most of you are master, is it? Master student? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All postgraduate. This is what is your dream. Even me when I was as a student, everyone before when you are in the high school, you will dream about going to the university. And, and your dream is to graduate from university. For the graduation, you need papers and you need thesis. To do the effective literature review for the thesis or for the, the papers, is it also a requirement for the, your master to have a paper publication? Uh, no, doctor, because they are master by class. Okay, for us, okay. Because for us last time, because we are master by research, we have to publish before we go for a graduation. But for you, you don't need, but you need the thesis. The thesis need literature review. And this is the roadmap of the graduation. You need to come out with your research proposal for final year project. And also you need to do some lab work. That one need also, if you can publish it, it's good for you. That one is busy. It will be experience for you and you will be happy that you have something out of your FIP project. And also the thesis, you need to submit it and you need to follow the guideline of UPM. Every university has different guidelines and also the citation, you have different citation style for all the universities. Later on, I will show what is the difference between different style. And also you will go for your Viva. For you, I think you no need for Viva. You just need to submit your thesis and you graduate. And at the end, you will congratulate you for uh, graduation. And you need to plan your project properly. That is the important thing. And you, when you have your proposal, you need to have the key answer, uh, the key words for your literature search. That is need to do literature review and the literature review need update from time to time. Because if you write your proposal and you already have the literature review, that one is before you start your project. But many papers will come during your project. It's better to update your literature review and your reference all the time. You need to check what are the papers in your area. Maybe the same project that you are conducting, some people only publish it during your time. That's why you need to be keep updating your literature review and find the references. Any questions so far before we start? The or mini, or right. some idea, okay? Okay, this is the tips for writing literature review. I think Prof. Oli mentioned about this before for her classes, the previous uh, lectures. Be clear and concise in your writing. If you can understand, or sometimes you, you can just check other people's literature review, and then see how they are writing also from other papers. You can see how they are writing, especially the review paper in your area and see how they are writing and how they are citing and what are the, the paper, the one they are citing, especially the paper from the high impact journal, the one they are trusted publisher, like the Science Direct, that's one, the Elsevier, Elsevier is the, the most trusted in our area. 
Uh, you know, some journals, they are uh, blacklisted like MDPI, Frontiers, but still they have very nice uh, papers and also you can get it from there because that's, that it is uh, blacklisted, but the papers, they are open access. They can be accessible, free, freely accessible, and they, they have very good uh, uh, papers. And use proper citation and referencing. This one I will show during my presentation how to do the citation and the references. And also gather some information rather than just simply summarizing one study. If you are doing your literature review, you cannot go and read only one paper or five papers in your area. It is not enough because every field or every subject in your literature, you need to gather many information and many papers. And as I say just now, you need to have at least the one in the last five years. Check all the papers in the last five years. If you don't have enough, then go for the last 10 years. And also you need to have the logical flow and structure. This one, I also I will show you how to use the AI. I have uh, how to show the AI will suggest to you how to do the literature search. I will show you today, inshallah, how to do. And also revise and edit the clarity and the flow of your literature review. You need to, the idea should supposed to be flowing, like you are telling story. You cannot mention something like, let's see, you are talking about the effect of fermented if, uh, fermentation on some food. Then you talk about that food in the beginning, then suddenly you change to talk about fermentation and you will go out of the topic and talk about something it is not relevant. And also, as I say, also see example of sample of written literature review. Maybe you can go to the library, see some people thesis, the one that are relevant to you. You can see the review papers, you can see the even the article, the research papers, if it is related to you. And also list relevant resources, books, website, and the articles. Mostly, no, most of the people, they are not using the books and the website. They are using the articles because there is many journals. They are online and also they are available, freely available, open access. Then better to use the, the articles, the journals. The books also, you can find some information in the books that they cannot be found in the journals, but it's not that uh, relevant now, nowadays. You can find all the information in the in the journal or in the articles. And be ethical. Be ethical, we talk about the plagiarism, and also to cite the people, the one you take the, the work from them. Later on, I will show. And also enjoy your writing. Make it as a legend. Sometimes we are stressed, you cannot write. But when you are not stressed and you see yourself, you can write, then do the, your writing. Don't be lazy. When you see yourself, you are enjoying the writing, continue writing. And also when you are reading the, the papers, try to get as, as much as possible information from the paper. Don't waste your time to read it many times. Try to obtain the information from the paper. Maybe you can put it in the word, summarize it. Later on, you can paraphrase it. Even no need to paraphrase it from the beginning. Just try to gather all the information from the paper. You copy paste. Later on, you paraphrase it. When you paraphrase it, you can change the color. Maybe you when you, you don't paraphrase it, you put it in different color, maybe in red color. After you paraphrase, change the color because you will not, you will forget if you paraphrase them or no. And then when you get the information from different resources or from different papers, you can just arrange it and you put it as flow. Then it will be easy for you to read it later on or you paraphrase it. Okay, questions? Okay. Dr. Okay, Sally, now, you yes. mentioned paraphrasing. How, how yes. is that not done? Okay, paraphrasing, I will show during my presentation okay, later on. I, I have many slides on that. Thank you. No problem. Dr. Ahmed. <laughs> Saeed. Hi, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, for the literature search, there is a systematic strategy to identify the relevant li literature or in the topic, and also using different steps, including dividing your research question. Before you start your literature research, for your literature review, you need to find your keywords and also the research questions. The keywords is very important. Even when you are trying to search, that's why every paper has the keywords. When you try to search about, uh, as I say just now, I give you example about the effects of fermentation on soya bean. Then the soya bean and the fermentation is the important keywords. When you are trying to search for these papers, you go for the soya bean and also for the fermentation and try to gather all the information on the fermentation and also for information about soya bean. This is very important. But if you want to combine them, the effect of fermentation on soya bean, then you can find some paper. But later on, maybe you can divide, put only soya bean and fermentation. Then you can gather more information about both of the, the topic, soya bean and also the, the fermentation. And also the good literature search strategy helps you to ensure that you find all the relevant and accurate information you need for your research project. This one, when you write the good research question and also you have the keywords, it will gather all the information about your topic and about the field that you are studying. And it will help you later on to, to see all the information and also to, to get enough information in the last five years. As I say just now, in the last five years, if you don't put the keywords, you will find you maybe you will not find enough uh, papers in that five years. But if you choose precisely the the key the keywords, then you can have enough uh, information. Any question? Yeah, you can ask me the question during the presentation. Don't worry. Okay, this one, I told you, you can use the artificial intelligence in the literature search. Later on, I will show you how to use some of the websites to find the literature search. And also it will guide you how to do the, how to write the literature review and also how to do the, the literature search. Because the, the AI can quickly analyze all the data available. And also maybe you can specifically mention can you give me the uh, the paper about the topic? You mentioned the topic, maybe the fermentation in the last five years. And it will go give you all the papers or all the information find in the last five years. If you mention about in the last 10 years, then he, he, the AI will give you only in the last 10 years. Then also it helped us to improve the accuracy. The AI algorithms, is more than a, a human brain. It will give you all, identify all the relevant information more accurately. Because for you, maybe you sometime from time to time, even for the AI, you can mention to him, I want the papers only from the scopus. Because for you, if you go for to the Google Scholar and you search for the, the keywords, it will give you all the paper from different uh, sources. But if you mention to the AI, I, I just want the papers from the scopus. It will give you only from the scopus or from the web of science. It will give you specifically the papers from the web of science. Then also enhance discovery. AI I can uncover hidden connection and the pattern that human researchers might miss. Because for you, the soya bean or some compound that's coming from the soya bean can be found in other paper, in other uh, plants. You cannot find that if you, for you, you don't know, but the AI will help you to find those compounds can be found in other plants rather than the soya bean. Because you are looking for information about like uh, flavonoids from soya bean. Then that flavonoid can be found in soya bean, but it is not in the, in the last five years then maybe he can find some other compound in other plants 
that can be found in the soya bean. And it is, it is uh, published in the last five years. Okay. Faham. Faham. <laughs> okay. The text meaning also. The AI, AI algorithm can extract and analyze information from a large text database. It will give you, if you don't specifically mention the, the from Scopus or from a certain database, it will give you more information that you can find in the Google Scholar. But you need to filter them. That is the most important thing. You need to filter which paper that you can trust, which one you cannot trust. And there is some filters you can be used in the AI. You can find and you can filter your papers as you can use it in the Google Scholar. In the Google Scholar, you also you can mention, I want only, you can limit the, the date or limit the time, maybe in the last five years, is the same thing can be found in the AI. And can be used for different language. Sometimes the AI can help you to find some information can be found from papers published in French. Then it will translate it to you and bring it to the English. That you cannot, for you, if you go to study that paper, you cannot understand because it is in different language. Maybe you can find some information from Arabic papers or Chinese paper, then it will translate it to you in English. I, I also can use different uh, feedback to provide better result from different uh, machine learning. However, you need to clearly define your research question and the keyword to get precise result. As I mentioned just now, you need to mention, I want about the fermentation and soya bean. You can combine them and you can mention to the AI, I want from Scopus only in the last five years. Then it will give you all the relevant information. I think I need to go fast before of the time. Okay, formulating the research question. Emphasize the significance of formulating a clear research question before conducting your literature research. Anyone give me example what he is going to do about in the literature review and how to choose. Maybe this one during the break, I will, I will give you assignment or just to tell me how to define your research question and how to do conduct the research about uh, about the literature search about those uh, keywords and also the research question. And also you highlight the role of the research question in guiding the research project. This one can be done in the AI or can be done in the Google Scholar or in the Scopus. You can show the case of the outcome. Like this, I give some examples here. I think just, uh, okay, here. Selecting appropriate uh, keywords and search the terms relevant to the research question in the context of the science study. Sometimes when you, let's see, when you mention about the fermentation, it will give you the, uh, if you mention only the fermentation, when you do the research about the fermentation, it will maybe give you the fermentation of bacteria, which is relevant to so soya bean, but maybe some other fermentation from the alcohol coming from the alcohol, which is not relevant to you. Then you need to filter it and uh, remove it. And generating effective keywords for refining research queries. If you put some keywords, then when you see the paper, the one, most of them or all of them, they are not, not relevant, then you need to choose another keyword. You need to change the keywords. That's mean they are not relevant to you or they are, you don't properly choose the, the keywords. That's why choosing the keywords and the research question is very important in doing the literature search. Another thing is ident uh, identifying relevant database and resources. Which one, which database that you can trust? As I mentioned just now, the academic database like Scopus, newspaper cannot be trusted. The books, the papers, even the papers from different publishers, especially some publishers when they are blacklisted, 
you cannot trust. The PubMed, Scopus, Google Scholar, even Google Scholar, there is some papers, the one it will bring to you, they are from blacklisted journals. That's why you need to be very careful in taking them. Even citation, you need to cite only the paper, the one they are from a good publisher. And you cannot uh, cite the, the newspaper. Or sometimes there is no, some when you go to the website, some website, they cannot be trusted. Some of the websites still you can cite them. And you just put the, when did you access it? That one, that can be acceptable. But some of the website, they cannot be cited and they, they are not acceptable. Questions? So far? Yeah, Dr. How we want to know uh, whether the, the uh, journals is blacklisted or is okay. locally? Yeah, that one later on I will show also in the Scopus. I have the database, how to do the, how to see. The first thing is to see the impact factor. The impact factor is that journal has the impact factor and also the publisher. If the publisher can be trusted or no. Later on, I will show it during the practical also. And also I have some slide here to show. Okay, for the research uh, filters and limitation. You can use some of the research filters and limitation specific to science research to narrow down your research result. As I mentioned just now, you can put the publication date or the research study design. Then let's see for you, you are doing the, the effects of fermentation on the soya bean, but you are using certain statistical uh, analysis. Then maybe you can, to avoid some of the journal that you they are not relevant, maybe you can specifically mention the effect of fermentation using response surface methodology. Then you just want the papers, the one they are related to response surface methodology. Then it will give you all the papers related to the response surface methodology, RSM, about the fermentation of the soya bean. And also you can exclude non-relevant research. When you do your search, you see that there is so many, so many papers they are not related to soya bean. They are related to fermentation, but they are not related to soya bean. Then you can exclude them by changing the, the keywords and also do the limitation for, you can change the filter. And also evaluate the quality and the relevance of scientific uh, sources during the literature search process. This one, later on I will show you in the Google Scholar how to limit the, the date, how you limit the time, and also how you to limit the, the papers coming from, okay, for you, you don't trust some of the countries the when they are not good in research, then you want to remove all the papers coming from that country. Then you just want, or you just want to focus on the paper coming from Malaysia. You know that the research about the soya bean is only in the South Asian country. Then you can just narrow down to make it only in the Asian country. Then you can limit or remove all the, uh, the work coming from other countries. Or some of the, uh, of the time that we want to focus only on the paper coming from US or from UK or from the English uh, uh, countries, then you can just specify that countries then it will exclude all the uh, papers coming from other countries. Understand? This is how to limit and how to set the filter. Okay, this one, uh, to keep the track of the research result, there is some refer uh, for the citation. When we do the citation later on for the Mendeley or for the RefWorks, when you search for the papers, automatically you can export it to the, the, uh, the software, which is the Mendeley. Then you can have folders. You can, you can put all the papers in one folder, like the, all the paper related to soya bean, you can put them in a folder. Then you can name that folder on soya bean. All the paper related to the fermentation, you can put them under a folder name, fermentation. The one they are combining fermentation and soya bean or about the 
response surface methodology, then you can put them in different uh, folder. Then you can organize yourself. Later on, if you go back to your Mendeley software, you can find easily find your papers and they are in different folder. No need to waste your time to go and find the, the papers again. It's organizing for you. This is how you keep uh, tracking and also it to organize yourself. And also it is important to keep accurate record for citation and future reference. For future reference, let's see if you are studying the same topic. That papers can be used in other paper then directly, or you use the, the reference for your paper. Later on, if you want to use it for your thesis, you can find the same folder and you can cite there directly. No need to go again and cite for all the papers. It is only defined in your, uh, so uh, in the web, uh, in the software and it is in specific folder. It, is, it will be easier for you to, to cite the paper for your thesis. Also, as I mentioned just now, easy to find the paper, put in folder in the citation software in the Mendeley. My student later on, she will show you how to put all the folder, how to export the, the papers. Because when you do the, in the Google Scholar, you can export many papers or all the papers related to your topic or to the field for the key search. The key search that you are using, if you are for the soya bean, then all the paper related to soya bean, if you can trust those paper, you can export them directly to the, to the Mendeley and you can put them in folder. Okay, when you do the uh, citation or when you uh, gather all the, the paper that is related to you, and then you want to take all the information from them, you need to avoid the plagiarism. As I mentioned to you, you can, take all the information, even when you are reading the, the papers, you find some information that they are very important to you. Then you can just copy and paste it in the, the word. Later on, you can, to avoid the plagiarism, you need to paraphrase them. Paraphrase, there is a way. There is a way I will show you later on. But for the plagiarism, is the act of using someone else's work. When you take it or you copy and paste, and you put it in your paper or in your thesis without proper citation, even so, even if you cite it, if you put the reference of that people, but you don't paraphrase it to your own word, that, that is still considered plagiarism. You need to paraphrase it using your own word. Later on also, I will show you how to paraphrase. And this is, it's not good, it's not ethical because you are taking other people's work and it is a breach for academic integrity. It can be if the most of the journals, if they detect that you are, your work is plagiarism, they will put you in the blacklisted. You cannot submit the paper to the journal and you cannot publish. Most of the journal, they ask for less than 20%. For the thesis also, if you, they found that you, your the text similarity is more than 20%, your thesis will not go for a, for an examiner. You cannot submit your thesis. You need to paraphrase and also you need to bring it down below 20%. And this is some types of the plagiarism. When you copy some other people's work without citation, even if you paraphrase it, and you don't cite it, it will be still considered as plagiarism. If you take it from the same paper, but you don't, you put the citation, but you don't paraphrase it, it will be as considered as plagiarism. You need to do both paraphrasing and also citation. Sometimes the self-plagiarism is when you have a paper and you want to publish another paper. Then you take the same information from your previous paper without paraphrasing. Still, that one is considered as self-plagiarism. You are copying your own word, but still it's considered as a plagiarism. You need to do paraphrasing. For the, your even your previous work, you need to still do the paraphrasing. And also plagiarism of idea or concept. When you take some 
idea from people or some figures. Even some figures, if you take it, you need to design it based on your own idea or your own uh, uh, figures, or you can change the pictures of the... Also, you need to cite. If you take the figure from, from uh, paper, even with the copyright that you do, you mentioned to the, the editor that you you have the permission from the edit uh, the authors from the previous paper you need to cite them if you don't cite it will still consider as plagiarism but you need to get the permission if you cite let's see you are writing a review paper and you ask the author from the previous paper you ask him for permission if he give you the permission, the journal will ask you to show that permission. And also you need to cite the authors. Without citation and also without permission, you cannot publish it in your uh, review. You need to, it will consider as plagiarism. Okay, this is some clue how to do to avoid the plagiarism. And the best practice is to properly cite and reference all the resources used. The properly citing is to put the same citation and also the reference of the, the source you use. If you take those information from, even if you paraphrase it, you need to put the citation, proper citation. And also understanding the difference between the common knowledge and original idea. There is some fact that you cannot change it. That one, if you put only the reference, it is enough. Because no, you cannot change it, especially in the method. In the method, because the method, when the most, many people, they are referring to some method because they keep paraphrasing. Sometimes even if you paraphrase it, it will be captured as plagiarism. That one, it is okay. Because if you put only the reference, it will, it will be considered as not a plagiarism. Or even the plagiarism percentage, it will come very low from the, the method. And the method is, is the most uh, difficult one to, to paraphrase it. Later on, I will give you some phrases that can be used for the method and for different, and also for the literature, that no need to paraphrase it. It's, it's considered for all the, the journals, they are considered those uh, paragraph or those sentences are not plagiarism. I will show you in the next slide. And also, you need to learn how to use the plagiarism detection software. Mostly, we are using the Turnitin in the UPM or all the academic in UPM. They are using the Turnitin software. Sometimes, when you do your paraphrasing, you need to go and check how, how many percent is similarity from your work. If it is not OK, then you need to go back and do another paraphrasing. And also the reference management software. Sometimes you cite your uh, the, the paper and when you submit your paper or your thesis for uh, uh, examiner, you forget some of the reference. Even for you, you already know that you put the reference. That's why it's better to use the management software like the EndNote or the Mendeley. Because when you cite using the Mendeley, you will not forget. But for you, if you do it manually, Let's see if you have for your thesis, you have 150. We are human. We can, uh, for we will miss some of the references. We will uh, forget some of them. That's why if you use the management software, it's better for you. It will put all the references for you and also it will help you to cite and also bibliography, it will arrange it for you. Any question? Okay, we can continue. Effective paraphrasing technique. You just need to, when you want to paraphrase your sentences, when you take the sentence from the paper and you want to paraphrase it, you need to understand the meaning of that sentence. Before you go to change the, to paraphrase it, you, you need to understand the meaning. Because sometimes if you go word by word, you will change the, the meaning, the total meaning of the sentence. 
Okay, you can ch uh, change some of the verb. Let's see, you want to change the verb to do, you want to uh, use, you want to put, you can change it to utilize. Use and utilize is the same, the same meaning. And it will not change the sentence. But maybe sometimes if you want to use, uh, let's see, you want to change the verb use to another verb like do, is totally change the, the, the meaning of the sentence. That's why you need to be careful about the meaning. Even if you change word by word, then you need to be careful. And also sometimes we can use the, if the sentence is using the passive voice, you can use the, the active voice. Or you can change the, if it is starting with the noun, you can start with the, the verb. And you change the, the sentence, uh, the sentence from uh, from the noun to the verb. And also, in the real writing, you, in your own words, using synonyms or alternative sentence structures, as I mentioned just now, you just make the structure, you can use the passive word, uh, the uh, passive voice instead of the active voice, or you can st start with the verbs instead of starting with the noun. And the other tips is to focus on the main idea and the concept rather than the, placing the exact word, as I mentioned just now, the same thing. Sometimes if the sentence is a simple sentence, maybe you can make it as a complex sentence. You can make it in, 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 enlarge the sentence. You can make it as a complex sentence. Then it will change the, the uh, it will paraphrase and it, it will keep the, the meaning and then it will consider non-plagiarism. Later on, I will show you how to use the Quillbot, uh, Quillbot website to show how to do the paraphrasing using that uh, website. And also, you need to maintain the original source while paraphrasing the and give credit to the original author. When you cite the paper and you do the paraphrasing, you need to go back and check. That's why when you, when you paraphrase, you need to keep the sentence in front of you. You, para, uh, you put the sentence on the top and you paraphrase it on the bottom. Then you can still see the sentence. If it, they still have the same meaning or different meaning. If you are doing manually, it is the good way is to do it in parallel. You put the sentence on the top, then you paraphrase it. Don't uh, change in the same sentence. You put the sentence and the, don't uh, remove it. You put it there and you you paraphrase it down there. Then you can still see the previous sentence to see the, the meaning is the same or different. And this is the one website. It give all the the the, para, uh, the sentences that they are acceptable and to avoid the, the plagiarism. I have it in the, the next slide I will show. And it's a self check for plagiarism is to compare your paraphrase with the original text. As I mentioned just now, you keep the sentence and you check the sentence that you, you paraphrase it and you see it is it has the same meaning or different meaning. And to use the quote and the uh, citation, this is very important to cite the work. If you, even if you paraphrase, you need to put the reference and you need to make sure that the reference is used, is relevant to the, the information in the sentence. Okay, some clue. Sometimes for us, if you don't really paraphrase the whole sentence and you want to change the, the citation because you don't want to, the software to detect that you are using the same work from the same reference, you can change the reference. You can see which reference is re is have the same idea about your work then you can put maybe you can take that sentence put it in the in the google scholar and you see that that coming from which paper then it will suggest to you which paper go to that paper and see that information is fine in the paper then you can cite the other paper don't cite the, the previous paper then it will not consider as a plagiarism 
and you can avoid also the plagiarism. But citing other work rather than the previous work that you take the sentence from, then avoid to use the same citation. But this is not good. It's better to paraphrase it in other sentence, uh, other words, and you put the same citation. It's better. But this is only a way if you want to avoid the plagiarism and you don't have time, maybe you can find other uh, uh, citation. Or you can put more than one citation. You can put two references or three references. Then it will not be considered as plagiarism and you can avoid the plagiarism. Okay, this is some uh, some example of paraphrase or phrases that that's generally considered acceptable without paraphrasing. No need to change them. Like the common knowledge. When you are mentioning some common knowledge or the fact, information that's widely known within the field, especially in the method. Some of the uh, phrases you cannot paraphrase it. You, like when we are talking about the HPLC. The HPLC, everyone know what is the HPLC when you have the high performance liquid chromatography and we want to do the method of the HPLC. Because most of the people, when they are talking about the gradient, the gradient system, they will put at one minute, the gradient are 95% from so, uh, solvent A. Then, how you rephrase this sentence? It is a common knowledge in the chemistry or in the HPLC. It's very difficult for you to, to paraphrase it. It will not be considered as a plagiarism. Or in here, we have water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. It's very difficult. And this one is like a common knowledge. Then you just put the quote, the quote here, and then put the, maybe you can put citation or without citation, it will be acceptable without and it will not be as uh, detected as plagiarism some of the definition also standard deviation uh, definition like the of the terms do not to be cited however if you are using specific standard non-standard deviation it may be appropriate to use to provide the citation some of the definition like the, uh, the same sentence like just now Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. This is definition of the water. Or the H2O is the water. How you can uh, paraphrase water is the H2O? You cannot paraphrase it. And then it is not considered as a plagiarism. Also, well-established methodology, like as I mentioned just now for the HPLC method, it is well-established. You cannot change it. And even if you want to paraphrase it, most, most of the people or many people before you, they paraphrase it in the same way that you want to paraphrase it. It's still, if they don't uh, remove it from the plagiarism, it will be detected. Even if you paraphrase it, you will paraphrase it as a previous paper. Another one is the conventional way, uh, uh, quote or uh, with some. That's the way uh, the people they are using in the normal life. You can also, this one is not considered as a plagiarism, but most of the time need to put references. To avoid, you need to put references for that uh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Also, previously uh, cited information. If the information has already been properly cited and it is cited by another uh, uh, reliable sources do not need uh, any reference. They already uh, cited before. And then maybe you can put more re references for that sentence, then no need to paraphrase it. And also some of the fact or historical event, like the objective fact or widely known historical event, don't usually require citation. However, if you put references, it's better for you to avoid the plagiarism. Any question from this example? And I have more. I will have a website I will provide to you. And they have a PDF that is show all the phrases that the, no need to do citation or paraphrasing. Okay.
And this is some objective or verbs that you can use it. If you are using some knowledge, when you talk about list, name, recall, recall, all these verbs, they are not detected as plagiarism. If you are talking about the comprehension, uh, compare, describe, disguise, explain, express, all these verbs were not detected as plagiarism. For the application, when you are talking about this, the analysis, the synthesis, the evaluation, all these verbs, they are not using, uh, they are not detected as plagiarism. And this is other uh, verbs. For the Another one to avoid to use the non-active verb. This one all appreciate, understand, believe, notice. These all the synonyms that you can use and then they will not be considered as a plagiarism. For the material and method, I give some, some information, but I don't want to focus because today we want to focus more on the, the literature review. I just give you some example here. Maybe you I, later on, I will share the slide with you. You can see. Okay. This is the, the website that I told you. We will use it for the paraphrasing. We'll both, I will share, I will show it to you in, during the practical session in the, maybe in the second hour, I will show you how to use this Quillbot. And this one, you can buy the license or you can use it for free online. But for uh, free online, you can just use it for the small sentence. You cannot put a long paragraph. And for me, I prefer to use the for the small sentence because it's side by side. You can see your previous sentence and you, the sentence that the software already paraphrased for you. And you can see is the meaning is the same or no. Then it's better for you to go, maybe you can put maximum two or three sentences. Then you can see is the, the meaning is the same, then you can copy and paste it. Then you go for another three sentences. It's better to do it that way. And this uh, paraphrasing tool is very, uh, very good and very excellent. In, and most of the people they are using it. But for me, for my experience before, I don't use this, this website. I, because, because for as a student, if you want to learn, it's better to do it manually in the beginning. Better not to be depending on the website. But if you are in rush, or sometimes for us as a lecturers, for the some of the for the papers, for the or some of the the grant proposal, for us we prefer to use some of the website to help us to do the paraphrasing. But it's better for you to do it manually to learn how to do the paraphrasing. That's why I will share with you the, the PDF to, to show to you what are the sentences that they are not considered as plagiarism and also what are the synonyms that you can be used for different facts, for the, the method, for the literature, when you talk about the facts, This is some of the, the things that can be done with the, this website. It can do the paraphrasing and also can give you some synonym suggestion and also can give you the sentence structure. Like I said just now, you can have the simple sentence, then you want to make it as a complex sentence. Then you can ask the software to make it as a complex sentence. Then. Maybe sometimes you have the complex sentence and you want to make it as a simple sentence, then you can summarize it. Or you have the whole paragraph, you want to ask the software to make to summarize it for you. Then it will help you also to summarize. And also this software has different language. It has French, I think uh, most of uh, the, most of the, the language, uh, Chinese, Malay also there is in this uh, so website. You can use the some of the phrases from Malay. It can help you to paraphrase it also. The sentence combination, you can ask the software to combine the sentence for you. You can give two sentences, then you ask them, you ask the software to combine it for you. 
he will put the combination words for you and and paraphrase it at the same time. I will show it to you later on how to use it. For the reference, it's very important, as I mentioned just now, because before we go to the break, I want to show you what, uh, and later on my students will show you how to use it. Accurate and consistent reference citation. As I mentioned before, it can promote the academic integrity and also to avoid the to avoid the plagiarism and also acknowledge the previous work and also it allows uh, for replication and verification of the previous work when you cite the the citation or the reference from previous work it help other researcher or other readers the one they read your paper or your thesis to go back to the to the original paper and check. And maybe if they are interested on some of the information, they can go, maybe they don't understand from your work, they can go to find more information in the previous work. When you have the proper citation, they can go back to the paper or the reference and check all the information that they, they need. And also it helped in avoiding the plagiarism and also it is a fundamental aspect of the scholarly writing to contribute to the growth and advancement of the knowledge in various, uh, various fields. When you put the reference, that means you are citing the previous work. This one, the previous work will be trusted from researchers because it's getting more citation and also that means the people they are really interested on the uh, the work. That means you are making integrity for the previous work and also giving some trust to the previous work. That's why it's very important to do citation. The proper citation and the references, there is different style. We have mostly for the for the thesis, we are using the APA. The APA style, we have the seven seventh generation of the APA style. Most of the university, they are using the APA. For the journalists, they are using different style. You need to go to the guideline of the, the authors and see which style the journalist is requiring. Then you can find it in this uh, software. Mendeley has all the, or most of the style that the journal require. And also the APA is found in all the uh, softwares like Mendeley and not Refworks, they have all this style. And this software will help you to include the in-text citation because in the, in the, inside the text, there is different style of citing. Some of the journal uh, or some of the, in the APA, we will see the, on uh, the name of the author at all, and then they put the, the, the year. Let's see Ahmed at all, 2020. But in the bibliography, it will, by click, you will have all the bibliography. It will create for you the bibliography, the list of reference that you include in the whole body of your literature review or on your thesis. And then it will put it by, by numbers or based on the style that the journal is requiring or based on the alphabet. It will do the sequence based on the alphabet. And mostly we are using the EndNote, the RefWorks, and also Mendeley. Today, my students will show you how to use Mendeley. Okay, this is the some reference style that's in, in the text. We will mention according to Johnson 2018, the climate change is pressing the global issue. That is this way how to use in the APS style, as I mentioned, based on the name of the author and also the, the but in here we mentioned the author and the year because we, we put it in the beginning of the sentence. Later on, I will tell you what, when we put the citation in the beginning of the sentence, what is the meaning? Or when we put it at the end of the sentence, what is the meaning? You see, according to Zonson, uh, 
we put the reference in the beginning and in the same sentence, I put it at the end of the sentence. I will tell you what is the meaning of when you put the reference in the beginning or at the end of the sentence. And in the list of the reference, this is how to put it. We put Johnson, then we put based on the style that you, you follow. But this one is like in APA style, using the APA style. This is when you have only one author. When we have more than one author, we will put Johnson at all 2022. That's mean you have more than one author. Or in the APS style, at least you have more than three authors. Because if you have less than three authors, you mention all of them. Comma, the second author, comma, the, the third author. But when you have more than three, you will mention at all, and then you put the end. And the list of reference, is, it is the same, like uh, different style. Okay, I think I will skip this because it is mentioning the same thing, like different style and different, the book, they have different style of citing. The refer, uh, the website has different style, the journal al -Chikar. And also the website, it will, you need to mention when you access the that reference. In here, I don't show. I just want to give you examples. Okay, this is one I mentioned just now, information is prominent. When we put the reference at the end of the sentence, like in here, ripening process, and then we put the reference at the end of the sentence, the, we want to emphasize the information coming in this sentence. The information is more important than the reference because this information, you can find this in different papers, not only in this paper. That's mean we don't want to focus or emphasize the reference. We emphasize the information. Information is more important than the reference. But in the second method, when we want to emphasize the reference, this information coming from this sentence is can be obtained only in this reference. This reference or this paper is the only one showing or reporting this information. That's why we put the reference in the beginning of the sentence. We want to emphasize the reference more than the information in the sentence. That's why is the author prominent. We want to emphasize the author or the reference. Another thing, when you are writing the topic sentence or you are in the method, we want to mention according to Isaac at all. He reported that then you can or when you put, for example, Isaac et al. reported that, then this one is the topic sentence. But you can write it in both ways. You can put the, the reference at the end or in the, the beginning. And this is the list of reference. We put it by alphabet, as I mentioned. You see here the alphabet H before K, L. And this one, the software will help you to put them in sequence based on the alphabet. For the templates, when you are using EndNote, Mendeley, or RefWorks, it is it is good for you and it will arrange for you all the references and put them in folder as I mentioned, and it is freely accessible uh, online. That's why Mendeley is, for me in this case, is it is uh, good and also suitable for most of the students to use it. Also for the one they don't have access to the library. Because the EndNote or the Refworks, you can get it from the library in UPM. But the Mendeley, no need to go to the library. You can just download it by yourself and install it. You can use it for free. My student will show you how to organize the reference in the Mendeley and also how to uh, create folders and how to do the reference in the text and also in the list of reference and to create a bibliography. This one, I will leave it to her later on to show you how to use. And thank you. Any questions? I try to make it in one hour before we go for the break. And also, if you want, for me, it's okay. I just want to go for prayer for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. If anyone wants to stay online with me during this break time, I can still answer your question and also entertain you. Because uh, for me, dinner is still early. I think just I will pray maybe 10 to 15 minutes, then I will come back here. I will stay online. You can ask question now, 
and you can ask after I come back, maybe 15 minutes, then I will come back after. Any question? Doctor, how, uh, let's say our reference is book, can um, Medley help to cite as well or manage? Yes. You can even format your, let's see, you when you go to the, refer back to the, the guideline from APA, if you don't find in the Medley the format, you can still modify or edit the reference. It will show you how to uh, edit the reference. You can follow the same style that the journal or the thesis ask you for. Then the Mendeley will help you with that. It will automatically detect the book will be cited as, as like that. Then it will put it automatically for you. The Mendeley can, can detect the paper, can detect the book and also the website. And you can change or you can edit the the format anytime from the reference. You can edit it, and you can make your own format even. Any other question? That one, my students will show you later on how to edit the the reference. And then I say, if you want to stay. After the break, I will just take 15 minutes, then you can, we can start from now because maybe we have so many things to cover. And also for the practical, maybe we need more time. I am okay if you want to continue in the break. I don't. Or if you want me to give you assignment, you can do it, also can. Any other question? Don't be shy to ask questions. I will share with you also the slide. You can go through. If anything, you don't need to take picture. Right? I will share with the Prof. Azza. Prof. Azza will share with you, with you. Questions? I suggest we break first, doctor, for a prayer. Then we join okay. back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll just take uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Then I will come back. Okay. I will stay online. You can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. You see the. Okay. This is the quill bot, but I have the premium one because I have a, a account. If you want to buy, you can buy from Shopee. How much from Shopee? 10 ringgit, Ten ringgit five ringgit. You can get it. This one you can get uh, quill board. You can get also Grammarly. Grammarly also five ringgit, ten ringgit from Shopee. Nowadays Shopee is making our life easy. Then you can put the sentence here that you take. That's why I told you you can put it side by side here. Then you can maybe you can choose academic. Then you can paraphrase, rephrase. Then you see the sentence, the one uh, will bought uh, the software or the uh, paraphrase it for you and you can read it. That's why I ask you to put one, uh, maybe two or three sentences. Don't put too uh, long paragraph. It will be very difficult for you to check the, the meaning. You can read it again and see if the same Meaning, then you just copy here, then you take it to your word. Then you can see maybe formal. Formal also is uh, good also. It's not uh, like formal, the one from uh, outside, but it's still considered okay. The standard one, fluency, fluency, the English is very accurate, but the academic is the, the best one. If you want to make it maybe creative, Creative, it will add so many information to you, which is not relevant sometimes. But sometimes it is relevant, depend on the topic or depend on the field that you are using. If you want to expand it, it will make it to you like three sentences, maybe it become five sentences. If you want to shorten, it will shorten to you. Even here, if you want to click, let's see this a fiction. I don't want this. You can still see, maybe you want to change the synonym. 
affection, diseases, aliment problem, disorders, conditions, maladies. This one also characterize. You don't want this, you can change it. Noted by all the one, all the words here. If you want to have the synonym, it will suggest to you different synonym. Then you can change. Questions? And then it has different languages here. As I mentioned, you can have Malay, even Malay is here, but we don't have Arabic. We have that, German, Hindi, Turkish, Sweden, Spanish, Russian, different languages. But mostly I'm using for English. Also can check for the plagiarism here. For the premium one, you can check for the plagiarism. You can upload your file and it will show you for the plagiarism. Doctor? Yes. Uh, do you suggest of paraphrasing uh, paragraph by paragraph or sentence no. by sentence? For me, if more maximum, you can take three sentences. Three to four. If the like this two sentences is better for you because you later on you will change check the meaning if the meaning maintain the same or different because if you put the whole paragraph it's very difficult for you to check the meaning let's see if I add this one to here then I paraphrase it's very difficult to see it here side by side because it's too much. And it, to read it, it will take a long, a lot of time from you. It's better just take only a few sentences, maybe two to three, then paraphrase it, then you see the meaning. If the meaning maintain the same, then you just copy and paste it in, in your word. Okay. This one is very straightforward. It doesn't... Uh, you just maybe you can explore by yourself. You can practice it by yourself. You just uh, go online, put quillbot.com, then it comes to you. If you have the account, then you just need to log in. You can even, maybe you can buy one account and all of you can use the same account. I can even give my account if you. And, but in Shopee is very cheap. You can buy five ringgit, 10 ringgit. You can have your own account. But if you are using the free one, you can also use it without login. But you that one, it has a limited uh, addition of this. Maybe only few. Then just now I request all of you to install Merlin as extension in the Google here. You will get it here. All of you install it, Merlin. Please install this, Merlin, before we proceed with Mendeley. Later on, we will come back to this, Merlin. And maybe I give you example. Just now, I mentioned, please provide, I will ask the Merlin, please provide uh, literature. Review about soya uh, food fermentation, maybe foods fermentation from Scopus. Then Even if they don't provide, they will give you all the... But you need to have the reference. Uh, GPT will not provide the reference for you. But it will give you so many information, like the whole literature. You just need to go, maybe take these sentences and take it to the Google Scholar, then you find the reference. You take it to the Google Scholar, then you find the reference. Take maybe paragraph by paragraph or sentence by sentence, then you find the reference here. 
It's too much. Take sentence by sentence. But at least it will show you the flow of how to find the, the information. Okay. Yeah, this one, you can see this, uh, all the reference that the, the one they provide to, to you here. And also you can ask Merlin to paraphrase for you. Can you paraphrase? Paraphrase. Uh, he will paraphrase it for you. This is also you need to check the, the meaning. That's why it's better to go sentence by sentence. Or you have different websites, the Quillbot, you can use it. You can even ask ask the AI also, can you give me... Okay, let's see here, provide how to write. how to write literature, to write literature review about food fermentation. It will give you all the steps. Define your research question or objective, clear state the focus and the purpose. You see here, conduct comprehensive literature search, Utilize academic database such as Scopus, PubMed, Web of Science, all the steps here. Organize your review. What you need to do, the field of food fermentation, use the citation, how to use APA, revise and edit. It will give you all the steps, one by one. The conclusion, from the conclusion, even if you ask how to write the thesis and you give the title, then it will give you all the, from the introduction until the conclusion. The method for the literature, for the introduction, objective, problem statement, what to write in every section. Okay, questions? This one you can explore also. You can even compare between this Merlin and also the charge GPT also, but you need to give your questions precisely. When you give precise question, it will give you the information relevant. And sometimes you need to check the information obtained. Sometimes it will give you false information. If you tell him why you give uh, false information, he will ask, tell you sorry and he will provide the, the accurate or the correct one. From time to time, he, he will cheat you. It's like the, some human, it can cheat you. You need to be careful sometimes. You need to read all the sentences that they provide to you. Questions? Okay, I think maybe we can proceed with Liana. She can show you how to use the Mendeley. Then later on, I will have another slide to present about the, the journal impact factor and the quarter. Later on, I will. Okay, Liana, you can share your, I will stop sharing. Before, any question? Before I proceed with Liana? Uh, doctor, I have a question. Yes, so if we use uh, example AI tools like this to write our thesis, will, will it be detected as a form of plagiarism? Yes. You need to paraphrase it. Anything that you use from the charge GPT, now they, in the Turnitin, they include even the thing that you take from uh, charge GPT. 
of AI. AI. So after we use the chat GPT, we need to re-paraphrase again before we uh, put in our thesis, is it? Yes. Okay, thank you. If you have the premium one, some of the premium one, if you have account, that's one doing the paid one, they provide the reference and also they paraphrase for you. But the the free one, they don't have this, uh, they don't provide. Uh, you need to do reference and also you need to paraphrase. Okay. But at least it will help you. Let's see if you want to write your thesis. If you ask the Shard GPT how I write my thesis on this topic, you give the title. It will give you all the steps for every section. Like for the title, what, what is the correct title? For the literature review, for the introduction, for the methods, for the result and discussion, what you should focus on, and for the conclusion. It will give you for all the sections one by one. It will just help you to organize yourself and also to do the flow of the, the thesis. Okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, we'll mention, maybe I will give you another example on how to write thesis about food fermentation. But if you give the whole title, it's better. Formulate research and objectives, review the existing review, develop a research methodology, collect and analyze the data, interpret and analyze the result, organize your thesis, structure your thesis for, you see here, literature review, introduction, literature review, methodology, result, discussion, and conclusion. In the introduction, what you should do here, provide overview on the importance and significance of food fermentation, state your objective, question, and hypothesis, briefly explain the structures of your thesis, for the literature review, summarize the relevant. For the methodology, for the result, and for the discussion, conclusion, and the reference, and also to revise. It will help you. It will become your supervisor to help you revise and edit also. It will give you all the structure or the thesis. It's really beneficial, but if you depend on the chart GPT, you cannot do anything. You will learn everything from the online. It's like for the future, no need uh, teachers, everything in here. Questions? Okay, we have maybe another five minutes. You can ask question before we proceed with the Mandali. I show you how to use Quillbot, how to use the Merlin. My students will show you how to use Mandali. Then we can, this one I think I have few slides. This one, it, I think it will require also another 20 to 30 minutes. And they will show you how to use uh, Scopus, Scopus, and also the Google Scholar. Later on, I will. Okay, I will stop sharing before I ask my student to to share her screen. Oh, how to? Okay, stop sharing. Please ask her a question because I want her to uh, to learn also and to, to know how to explain. This is uh, also a training for her for the future. Hello, can I come? Uh, is my voice clear? Yes, nice and good to everyone. Is everyone hear my voice? Okay, so uh, First of all, I bet everyone uh, must. Uh, I think everyone don't have Mendeley 
yet, right? So, um, there is two types. There is two types of Mendeley, which is first Mendeley Desktop, and then another one is Mendeley Reference Manager. But the one that I'm going to show uh, to you is Mendeley Desktop. Uh, because I have uh, familiar with this app uh, since degree. Okay, so uh, for Mendeley, uh, um, can type Mendeley Desktop, uh, this one, 1.19.5 installers. Okay, and then, <laughs> uh, if I'm too fast, uh, just stop me, okay? And yes, then, slowly. You are very <laughs> fast. And then, uh, for this one, uh, can choose whether Windows or MacBook. Okay, just uh, click uh, either this one or this one, and then it will be auto download. Okay, is everyone with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So already downloaded. Okay. After download, just install it, and then it will become like this. If everyone finish installing mentally, just say so, okay? Have everyone done installing Mendeley? <laughs> or is it too fast? Yes. Already. Is there anyone uh, not finished installing yet? Okay. And then, uh, first register. Uh, so we need to do an account first. Sign in. Mm -mm. So do the... Uh, and then sign in. After that, uh, get back to this app again. Give them time to, <laughs> to sign up. Okay. Okay, when I uh, get back to the app, uh, just uh, take stay sign in so that I uh, don't need to sign in multiple times. Sure. Okay. So everyone uh finish in uh sign in. Is everyone with me? Can I proceed? <laughs> Too fast. Don't know.
everyone dine. Can I proceed? I think everyone is dying. <laughs> Okay, so uh, when uh, when you guys sign in, uh, there is uh, this thing will pop out, which is reference manager and citation plugin for Microsoft Word. So uh, for me, uh, it's already installed. Ah, <laughs> uh, so for to make us easier to cite it, for this one, uh, citation plugin. Microsoft Word uh, needs to install first. Just click on uh, on anything that can be clicked here. Huh? Okay, okay. <laughs> Why cannot see? Eh? Jat, 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 jat. Stop share. Share screen. Can see right now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so when uh, sign in, this thing will pop out. Uh, reference manager and citation plugin for Microsoft Word. So this uh, citation plugin for Microsoft Word is very important as it will make us easier to cite it when writing out this list. Okay, so for uh, this one, uh, need to install it. So just click anywhere that can be clicked uh, to install it. If anyone uh, already left out or not uh, until this yet, uh, just say so, okay? So when you finish installing this at um, words, it will be appear like this at reference. It will be there will be uh, a section for the Mendeley site automatic.
if then just uh, can write at the chatbot also before I proceed with the reference manager. Can we proceed? Or still need some time? I, I think we can proceed. Can I, yeah. Okay. And then, next, uh, if you notice, uh, at the left side, reference manager. So, it up to you guys. Uh, for me, uh, I suggest to install this one also. Uh, so, when install this reference manager, basically, it will link with uh, our uh, our web server. So here, see, uh, it will be directly import our um selected reference. So this one also can be installed. Okay, I give two to three minutes. Okay, uh, is everyone okay? Okay, and then uh, here for the words uh, also, other than uh, pop out message just now, we also can uh, install from here. Install MS Word Plugin and also install Web Importer. Okay, so uh, basically before uh, adding any reference, uh, I like to do folder first. Uh, so it will be easier for us uh, uh, to collect a lot of reference uh, for different paper and different uh, chapter uh, for our thesis. So like example, to create a folder, uh, just click here, create a folder. <laughs> if I'm too fast, <laughs> just say so, okay? The trial folder, for example. Oh, Double mix file folder. Okay, can do literature review. And this folder will help us later on to uh, uh to trace back our paper that we have been referred to. Instead of we just if let's say we didn't uh, do this folder will be like this, all documents. It will be very it's a lot and crowd. And then we don't know uh, which one is <laughs> the one that paper that we have been referred because there is a lot, right? 
So this is a collection of all of the paper that have been that have been referred and cited. Okay, so and then uh okay, so that's for the folder. And then uh to add the reference uh into this Mendeley, there is two steps. Uh okay, so okay lah for me to not. Okay, for example, so basically there is uh um three things uh, from the web importer uh, we can directly edit the reference it will be linked to the uh, this app but then my web importer uh, importer not function very well i'm not sure why but then another another thing that we can do is add pdf or we download the citation okay for example uh, i open google school uh, google scholar then i type Tempe, Tempe, Tempe and oh, for example, no, no, Tempe and diabetes, for example. Okay, so this one, uh, comparison between the potential of Tempe, uh, this one, okay, we can either, for example, Okay, this PDF, we can try to download it. Okay, download. Uh, before that, I think I need to do the new folder. Flash. Okay, flash. Let's see lah. Okay, so... so Okay, this one, I want to this one. Okay, we can directly uh, put this. Okay, so we have download it. And then open this, uh, the folder that we just made just now. Uh, okay, metabolomic. So click here, add. Okay, just add any uh, PDF that we want to add. Okay, for example, I, I want to add this one. Okay, so it will be uh, directly uh, okay. But then, if we uh, directly add the PDF into Mendeley, the first thing that we, we need to do is we need to check uh, for the we need to check if the reference is correct or not. So, when we double click Okay, it will be directly, uh, the PDF will, uh, will be directly open. So we can check. Okay, comparison, is the title correct? If uh, we want to edit or change anything, we can directly change here. Okay, like for example, we want to cap, uh, capitalize everything. Tempe, for example. We want to make it fast. Uh, can copy paste into the WordPress. So germinated. So basically, just uh depends to our uh format. If UPM just uh according to UPM format, okay, we can directly edit because sometimes um. Uh, even though we directly import the PDF into Mendeley. The citation can be uh wrong, so that's why we need to check this first. So let's say the main estawan Ramawati. So this need to be checked. Hayati Journal. Huh? So like for example, this one is correct. Two thousand twenty, uh twenty seven for the volume issue one, pages sixteen to twenty three. Okay, okay another. I make another. Example. Okay, and then this one, this one. This one. You know. Okay, download PDF. 
Okay, so see this app. We download it. Okay, foods. Okay, alright. So we check again. Okay, so so property perspective for integral valorization. Okay, for the authors, Santos, Rodrix, A E A. Okay, and we can click also, and then from which journal puts year twenty twenty three. Okay, here we can check twenty twenty three volume. 12, issue 7, where is issue 7? Okay. Huh? Sorry, I have a problem with it. So the MS apply in it is on Mendeley website. This app doesn't support my my auth version. Uh, for the Mendeley, did you uh, install the... Um, make what? They have the for the Mac version. Yeah, need to okay. install that one. This one. You already. Don't look for this one. That is the problem of the Mac. Some of the software cannot be supported. Huh? But if I'm not mistaken, should be it can be support. Uh, I think maybe since I never used MacBook before, maybe I think you can uh, jot down first the uh step for the uh installing and connecting with the words. Maybe after this, you can try an error again. Okay, so let me see. What do I need? Hmm. If did not support, I think maybe you can use other reference uh, apps such as EndNote. And not MacBook friendly. <laughs> hey, not there. Yeah, they have the same uh, steps. You just learn the steps here. For the RefWorks, you can use the same steps. Okay. So, um, to add the PDF uh, into the Mendeley, is everyone here? Or... Do I need to do another example? Okay, then. Okay, so that's for PDF. Another step uh, that we can do is uh, for example, so let's say here. Sure. Okay, so let's say I take this one, eh? the first uh, PDF that I have been downloaded. Okay, so if we don't want to download the PDF, uh, another thing we can do is we download the citation. Download citation, this. So make sure to download uh, the RIS one, the RIS format one. Okay. 
download. So in our folder, it will appear like this. Dot risk. Uh, for the title, uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, can be changed or can remain because when we insert into the Mendeley, it still uh, will re regenerate into its uh, topic and title. Okay, so make sure to download uh, the risk format one. Risk file. Okay, and then what we can do is also same. Just add this one. Okay, so for this one, uh, there is no PDF, but the uh, reference uh, confirm is correct. So if we add the PDF, we need to check for the reference first. But then if we uh, directly import uh, the site, that, uh, the reference that we download, the reference is confirmed correct. But then how we are going to uh, make sure that it has PDF so that when we click, there is... Uh, it, it will be pop out okay so i uh i will delete this one mm -hmm. delete delete so if we want to add the pdf okay go to files at the details section go to files and then add file okay so just now this one Okay. So, okay, we can see here the PDF has been added. So, when we click, the paper will come out. So, uh, from here, we also can use uh, highlight everything to jot down. So, basically, mainly it's convenience to uh, go back into our, uh, go back, back to our previous paper that have been referred to and to uh, see again what we have been read, what we have been highlighted. Okay, so I give another example. Okay, another paper. Okay, this one. Uh, may I ask? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is this Mendeley only available on on um desktop? Like, is uh can download it using like tablet or something? Is that possible? No. Yes. Possible. Uh, it can be oh, downloaded. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, uh, if there is too many papers, it, be, it can be very heavy. <laughs> oh, so, so it it means for like me, I suggested I can... to use it. So, I suggest to use a uh, laptop. But, uh, but it can, but you can try to download at that or iPad. Uh, which means like, uh, is there like a uh, Mendeley to be downloaded like uh, on on tablets and stuff because sometimes uh, some, some some websites like it only supports desktop so yeah it's just wondering uh, Doctor, I right? think if the if the tablet is using the Microsoft I think okay you can use it oh which means like some tablets they use the desktop mode then maybe possible yes okay thank you no problem Uh, okay, and then for this one, we continue. Oh, another one. Uh, maybe you also can try to use uh Mendeley Reference Manager other than Mendeley Desktop. It's also same the concept. Uh, where you can find Mendeley. Mendeley, Mendeley. Not this one. Yeah, this one. Mendeley Reference Manager. Download. This one can be as well. Yeah, this one. Okay, so I continue. Another example. So let's see here. We cannot get the... We cannot get the citation. So just go back can directly from here can take uh, the reference from here side and then click the ref main so it will be downloaded so here we can see 
It's also in uh, list folder, eh, list format, list file. Okay, see? Just add it. Just add it the file. Just add the file. Okay. So if you uh so basically if we don't want to uh add the files, uh it's also okay. It means uh this reference can be cited into the words, can be cited into the words. But if we want to uh, add the files and later on want to refer again, suggested to download the PDF and insert. So basically, uh, add uh, the reference folder is much easier and trusted compared to directly add PDF because sometimes if um, if we check the here, the reference is wrong sometimes. Okay, after that. Uh, okay, so far, uh, so far so good, right? <laughs> so can I proceed with the words? Yes. How to? Okay, so for the words, okay, let's see. Uh, so for the words, let's see. Mm -hmm. MP and this. Now like this. So from uh. Okay, for example, I don't know. For example, okay, you have made two sentences. And then you want to cite, uh, to cite this sentence. So just go to reference, insert citation, and then go to Mendeley, and then choose which one, uh, the paper that you have been referred to. For example, uh, I choose this one. So just type. And it will be appeared like this. Oh, before that, um, I forgot to see. In the Mendeley, we can choose whatever uh, style that we want to use. To view citation style. So there is APA uh, or any journal. Let's like say you uh, writing for molecules journal. So you can use, you can find for molecules. Here we can see molecules, nature. And for me, UKM also, uh, <laughs> for me, I use UKM 46. Okay, so uh, from here, uh, again, view, citation style, and then you can choose. If it's not here, just uh, click more styles. And then you can search or browse here. Okay, so and then when uh once you choose here, you also can uh choose here also like style. What kind of reference style that we want? So see, it's molecules UKM, more styles. Now it will be directly uh linked with Mendeley. So this one. The example that I give is uh, for UKM, for example. Uh, let's say uh, I want to try top 6. So see, it, it will directly change. So it will be easier lah for us. For example, you have uh, write a lot, uh, 10 pages. And then from, uh, you, from UKM style, you just want to format it into uh, top 6 style. So just click here, it will be directly uh, changed. Okay, another example. Okay, let's just do soybean. <laughs> we'll just copy paste the center. Much easier. Okay, then again, insert, uh, when you want to cite it, uh, go to reference, insert citation, go to Mendeley. Now, for example, I take this one. Even though it is, uh, there is no PDF, it still can be cited. Okay, then site oh and this one toxic you can all right until here clear yes Lena. <coughs> okay and then uh this for the sentence so uh another one is for the bibliography 
at the example at the end of the thesis, then you want to include all of the reference. Reference. Okay, so just go to reference and then insert bibliography. Okay. So because I just used two uh, reference to paper, so it just come out to. But then if you use a lot, 10, 20, it will be automatically come out. Okay. Do you mind repeating it again? For the bibliography? Yeah, so yeah correct. For, okay, so for at the end, when we want to include all of the reference, just go to reference, insert bibliography. Okay, so it will come out. And then, okay, so we can see another example. If I want to change style into top state, uh, it, can, it will directly uh, change. Here it will be changed. Here also will be changed. Or oh, this one, AMA. So need to know uh, UPM use what kind of style? Uh, yeah, nah, sorry. Uh, is it if let's say we have a word, a sentence that we cite, can be the mm -hmm. reference is auto. I mean, we, when we cite at our paragraph, then under reference, the auto uh, add in. You did. Uh, uh, you oh, we have to do uh, one by one. Yeah, yeah, you need to go you... to the sentence. You cite one by one. You need to include uh, the we sentence. Cite, uh, we sorry. cite by one, one by one. How about the references now? Is it? They will In the list. The bibliography. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Even if you add another one now, it will uh -huh. automatically come in the bibliography. Reference. Oh, yes, okay. In the reference list. You can try to add one more. Okay. <laughs> For example, Mr. Dietitian, go to Mendeley, I take uh, in Africa Society. This one. Hmm. Check, check, check. I think here, for example. Hmm. Yep. Okay, this one. I tried another paper. Okay. Uh, it automatically added. Uh, one more thing, Anna. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, if let's say that, that one sentence, we have more mm -hmm. than one uh, reference. So how to do it? Okay, so here, click, uh, just click the reference and then edit. Okay, so uh, we can directly search like, uh, I know now. Okay, or if we forgot what kind of <laughs> which paper, just go to Mendeley again. But then we need to remember this paper, Asta 1 2020. Okay, uh, Asta 1, metabolomic. Okay, for example, uh, we have uh, insert Asta 1 just now and we still need to click it again. Asta 1 and then uh, shift, parade. And then side. And that will become 2. But let's say if we forgot to uh, click Asta 1, we just, uh, we are <laughs> very rushed and then want to add another. For example, Gasmi. You will be saying. So never forget to uh, still click the one that we have cited. So uh, right. means if let's say the, the, the other papers in other folder, we cannot do right. We have to put in in one one folder, then we can cite uh, one sentence to uh, papers. No, you can cite it from different folder, no problem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So basically this folder is uh, to make it easier, which uh, what kind of paper we are being referring to? Because there is, there will be a lot. Later on, will be a lot. Like for example, right now I'm uh writing 
uh, about my chapter two. So when I want to add, uh, when I want to add another reference, we know which folder we need to go. If we forgot, uh, what kind of title, what which paper. But then, uh, Mendeley is very flexible. If we want to cite it, uh, if we want to cite from another folder, uh, it still, it still can. Possible, yes. Possible. Mm, it's still possible. For me, I, I try to arrange based on the introduction, literature review, mm -hmm. maybe your result and discussion. You can divide them like that. All the reference used in the introduction, you can put them in one folder. The one used in the literature review, you can put them in one folder. Okay. Oh, mean doctor, you arrange your uh, papers on sections. by section. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You can also arrange them based on the topic. Maybe you are talking about fermentation. You put all the fermentation reference in one folder. The one on the tempi in one folder. The one on soybean in one folder. It's up to you, depend on how you want to understand your div division. Uh, if, um, let's say our, our our thesis is completed, then already cited, but the folder inside uh, medley we already deleted, but it still remain here, right? Yes. You can even export your folder, your library. You can use this anytime. Can go to file. To file, okay. And export. Export that, that, that. I need to choose which folder. You can export uh, your library. Me, yeah, this one. Okay. Yeah. My collection. Yeah. Then you can use it anytime and any the computer. The same, you can share it with your friend also. Oh, this library you can share it with other people. Understand? Yes, yes, thank you. I think they they sit for they sit. You say ask for her a question before she goes. <laughs> can ask the doctor also. Do you want to add anything? You can stop sharing. Okay. Any other question? Doctor, just now you said uh, not trusted paper. How we want to know that is not the trusted paper? Okay. Okay, based on the, the publisher that you are using. If you are trying to find the paper from Scopus, if that paper, they are Scopus index, then you can just get it from Scopus. Let me share my screen. I think I have so many things to share. You can still stay after nine, no problem for me. Okay, I think I will go with this first, then I will tell you later on how to do because I will work with the GCR and also Scopus to show you. Can I start presenting this one first? Later on, I will. Uh... Sure. OK. For the journal impact factor and quartile, this is very important because we want to see with, if you want to choose the, the, uh, the journal that you want to publish your paper in, you need to be very critical with the journal impact factor, that the journal has the impact factor. And, and most of the university, they accept Q1, Q2, mostly Q3, or uh, mostly Q1 or Q2. And for, for you, if your uh, work is very good, then why you don't go for Q1 or Q2? Why you want to publish it in Q3 or Q4? I will tell you what is the difference between Q1, Q2, and Q3, and Q4. The journal impact factor is the measurement of the relative importance of the journal within its field. That means each, each field, let's see the, for the food science or for the chemistry, they have their own field. And every journal, they have impact factor and 
the Q based on the ranking. The one they have the highest impact factor will be considered high ranking. The, let's see in one field, we have 100 uh, journals. The first 25, they will be as Q1. The second 25, from 25 to 50, they will be Q2. From 50 to 75 will be Q3. The rest will be Q4. The high ranking will be the, the one with the highest impact factor. And the journal impact factor is to evaluate the quality of the researcher. I will show you how we calculate the impact factor. The impact factor is calculated based on two years. That's mean the citation in, in these journals, Nature has the 41, the impact factor of 41.577 in 2017. That's mean it will calculate the citation of the, the previous two years, 2015 and 2016, with the, the, the publication that it published in that journals in the last two years, in the last two, the same two years. And then it will calculate the impact factor. Citation of 2015 and 16 divided by the publication of the, the same two years. Then it will calculate the impact factor. What is important of the impact factor? It is widely used as a quantitative measure to assess the influence and significance because we, when we publish our paper in that journal, it will be visible and also highly cited. And also that journal is very trusted because the impact factor is higher and very popular. And the performance, uh, citation performance is very high. And also researchers mostly consider the impact factors. Uh, when you publish your work, your friend will ask you, what is the impact factor? If you say the impact factor is high, then they will be impressed. But if you say your the journal doesn't have impact factor or is very low, zero point something, then they will say your paper or your work is not very interesting. Then how to check the impact factor? This is the, the website or the software that can be used to check. Mostly we are using journal citation report. This is the most trusted one or the Scopus. Scopus or the journal citation report. For most of the university, they will accept the web of science or the Scopus index journals, these two. And this one can be checked from the journal citation report. Let's see if you have a paper, you want to see that paper is good or no. If it is fine in Scopus or the web of science, that means you can trust that paper. But if you check, that, your, that paper, it is not found in Scopus of the Web of Science. That means that paper is not highly trusted. And then the first thing is to see the it has impact factor and the, it is indexed in Scopus or the Web of Science. Because if from GCR, Journal Citation Report, you will find only the paper that they are in the Web of Science or in the Scopus. But in this one, uh, SGR, you can find even the paper, the one they are not found in Scopus or the Web of Science. That's why we trust GCR more than the others, uh, the Scopus, Web of Science, or GCR. GCR can tell you all the paper, the one you can find it in the Scopus or the Web of Science. I can answer your question based on this. You can. If you find the paper in the journal citation report or the journal, then you can trust it. If no, you cannot trust that. Uh, maybe it is uh, blacklisted or it is not uh, important. <clears throat> and this is all the that one, the same one, the one GCR, SGR, WS, the Web of Science, Scopus, and the Google Scholar. But in the Google Scholar, you will find all the papers, even they are Scopus index or w in, uh, WS index, you will find them all in the Google Scholar. That's why if you find the paper in the Google Scholar, you still, you need to go to the Web of Science or Scopus. If you find it in these two, then that paper is indexed or they are trusted. If no, you cannot trust it. That's mean that journal is not trusted. Or you take the name of the journal, then you put it in the GCR and you see that 
that journal, it is fine in a GCR with the impact factor and what is the Q, the ranking. The ranking, I told you, as I told you just now, the, the first 25%, it is, it is Q1. The, the second 25% is Q3, uh, Q2, and then Q3 and Q4. I don't want to take more time on this because it is the same thing. And I also shared the slide with you. The first quarter, it is Q1, is the top 25%. The second is this 50%. Then the Q3 from 50% to 70%. The rest are Q4. And the journal in Q4 had the lowest impact factor and received the fewest. But sometimes there is some papers they can be in two fields. Maybe they are in food science and chemistry. In the chemistry field, they they are Q1. But in the the food science, they are food science and technology. They are Q2. Then mostly university will take the highest uh, Q. That means they will take the Q1. But if they don't have any Q, you will find it maybe in the two field. Sometimes they are in one field. They have, uh, they have, they are in Q1, and in another field they are Q4. Depend on how many journals in the field, and what is the impact factor as compared to other journals in the same field. Also, the imp importance of the Q of the ranking is the same like the uh, impact factor. It is also the it will show what is that journals is very trusted and also the visibility of the journals or the paper depend on the impact factor and also it is more accurate as compared to the one without uh, ranking or without impact factor. Okay, this is from GCR. When we open the GCR, we put the the journal name. The GCR, you can uh, access it from the library. You just write journal citation report. Then you search for the, the journal that you want to check. It will show you, and also it will show you what is the publisher. From here, you know that this journal is from which publisher and it's which category. Here, you see it's for nutrition, chemistry, and food science. It has three fields. That's mean in three categories. Then, then you will see the impact factor of the journal. Here we can see is 7.9 impact factor. And on the right, you can see the most cited paper from this journal. We don't care about this, only if you want to cite them. And it will show you this journal is open access or closed access. This one is closed access because it is LCV, but in UPM, you have the access to LCV journals, all the food chemistry and... Then for the ranking, rank by rank journal. By rank. Question? For the ranking, rank by journal impact factor, then you will see this journal in the chemistry field, it is five out of 73. 73. That's mean it is Q1 because it's in the, the first 25%. Even it is it is top 10 because it's we consider the uh, Q1 or the top 10. Most of the university, they use the top 10 journals because the top 10 is seven. Here, five is considered as top 10 because it is from five, categorized five out of 73 in the chemistry field. But in the food science and technology, is nine out of 142. That means both of them in the in both fields, they are Q1. Questions so far? This is how to check the, the ranking and the impact factor of the journal from GCR. This is the most trusted website for university. That means when you have the journal here, it is WS from the Web of Science and also Scopus Index. Important for us to check the journals, the paper that you use is either quality or not quality. Or yeah. because if I the never paper, check, I just use. 
Okay, that's why. If you, the paper is from the journal that can be trusted from GCR, you can just go to GCR here. I will give you. Okay, let's see if you have paper. Any paper, let's see, just give an example. Metabolomics, like, because my area is metabolomics, I always like to, to search for metabolomics review. <laughs> If you write it in Google Scholar, it's better. Yes. Okay, I take this paper, then. This is the journals, maybe the, we take metabolite. Then we open the library. For you, you have your own, uh, because GCR cannot access it only from the library. For us, we have from UKM. For, for, for you, from UPM, you can also have the access to GCR, we just go GCR, journal citation report, database, then you type here, the journal that you are looking for. Metabolite. Okay, you have a result here, metabolite. Then you need to check what are the publisher. The publisher just now is MDPI. Yeah, it will show you that it is open access and the category is from biochemistry and molecular biology. If you find it in GCR, that's mean it is trusted. Then the impact factor is 3.8. When you go down here, you will see the ranking, rank by journal. Because this, it is only in one field, you can see here. It is 112 out of 285. That means is ranked in this, in Q2, in the second quarter. It is Q2. But in the university, we consider two years back. Always we consider we are in 2023, then they will consider in 2021. 2021 is Q2, it was Q2. Then this is the ranking of this, this journals. But there is some of the journals, you will not find it in, let's see, maybe I give the example of international journal. International journal. of chemistry, maybe. There is, uh, yeah, this is International Journal of Chemistry is not found in, uh, in the GCR. That's mean this journal cannot be trusted. Questions? Before I can proceed, I want to show you how to use Scopus. I think Scopus, everyone is, is familiar with the Scopus. Questions? You can just, maybe you can try to explore more for all these websites that I give you. You can see from the slide, you can explore and they are all user-friendly. You can just need to do practice, then you will be familiar with all the software. If you need any question, you can still email me or WhatsApp me also. I give my WhatsApp and my email in the in the slide. Doctor, what is the impact if you want to publish the journal? If what is the impact of journal quality? 
to to that journal that we want to publish okay the first thing if your if your work is very good and very excellent i think better to go for q1 first go for q1 you can choose the journals you go from your reference you can check your reference see which which one is suitable for your field that's mean you are working on the fermentation and from your reference you can see which journal that related to fermentation and most people they are publishing the fermentation in the journal then maybe you can check that one journal if it is q1 and the ranking is q1 uh, the impact factor is higher and the ranking is higher for q1 then maybe you can choose that journal maybe you can list one or uh, maybe five journals maybe you can discuss also with your supervisor if that journal is very important then you can publish in and sometimes it's about the, is it open access or you need to pay on paid journal or free journal also this one you need to consider if it is high impact factor and also the ranking is very high but you need to pay 12000 or more than 12000 then no point especially if the university is not paying like uh, mdpi university and malaysia they are not paying for the frontiers also they have q1 paper uh, journals but because of the malaysia cannot pay the fees of publication then we cannot go for that uh, publisher anymore but the good thing is to check your reference see all the journals check they are q1 or uh, and also the the ranking the impact factor then maybe you can select the journal this is how what, i do what, what is the impact of reference that we use if it's not from the impact or the good journal uh, that one for the thesis is okay but for the publisher the editor the first thing you will check the journal is indexed or no because it's automatically come in the database of the journal. In the database of the journal, they will show this, uh, the cross, they will cross all the reference. They will check all the reference when they are WS or Scopus and the one they are not trusted. If you have so many, if you have only one or two, it's still it will not affect. But if you have so many journal, they are not trusted. From the beginning, they will reject the paper. Oh, okay. Especially for publication, for TC is still okay. But for publication, they have a database. They will check. They will cross all the reference and they will see the the paper, the journal that they, that you are using or the paper that they are using, they are trusted or not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, I think uh, it is time to yeah. wrap up. Okay. Yeah. But please feel free to ask questions. And also you can even text me, you can email me. I already provide my email and also I provide my number. You can WhatsApp me or email me also. Yeah, uh, I hope I cover most of the things that yeah, uh, that's Prof asked me. <laughs> and I hopefully you understand most of the thing. I know you will not understand everything, but uh, mostly you and hopefully you understand most of the thing that I cover. And sorry if I do something like uh, I try to do my best to cover everything. Hopefully, okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmad, because uh, it is good to have a sharing session from from recently graduated. Because for me, I yeah I have left this for many years ago. So you know. <laughs> so thank you so much. But we Dr. still Ahmad, need your experiments, uh, Prof. Today. So thank you. <laughs> I uh, hope uh, okay, the thanks. sharing session or the lecture has given you uh, the information, inf enough information on the quality of journals, citations, some on AI. So this gives you at least, at least enough tools to do literature review. Probably you're just doing a short dissertation, it's fine, but this can also be used for your future if you wish to embark on PhD study. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a nice break. All right. Okay, nice thank to meet you, you all. Thank, thank you, you, Prof. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Prof. Thank okay, you so thank much, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Prof.